Hello. Uh, my name is Joey. Uh, I'm a rising sophomore at Middlebury College, and I am a My Voice Our Story contributor uh, for Blend. Uh, this is The Real Talk. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, mental health, um, which I think is a really um, overlooked topic today and I, I, in today's world, and I think you know, it doesn't really get enough coverage. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit specifically about um, kind of how it's fostered uh, like from a young age and how you know, it's something that a lot of people go through and I think it has some common roots in, with parents and, and kind of with our school system uh, in the US. Um, so I think firstly part of the reason why mental health is kind of so rampant and it, it it's allows itself like really to grow uh, throughout the country. I think it's really because parents are uneducated about it. Um, I think our the last generation um, of parents, I'm you know 19 years old, you know my parents, uh, they were born in the 60s. Mental health wasn't really concerned back then and it wasn't exactly uh, something people were educated about. And even to this day, you know, things like depression and anxiety, these are all things that are uh, really only being like coined kind of recently and, and kids seem to be more educated about it uh, than parents. So a little bit about, about me, I'm from Long Island, New York. Uh, I'm from uh, an affluent uh, town where there's a pretty pretty wide variety of, of uh, diversity. There's like a, an immigrant population, uh, there's like a middle class, there's also like a very wealthy upper class. Um, I come from somewhere in the middle of all of that. Um, I went to so I went to a public high school, and if anyone uh, you know watching this went to a public high school, you know that you know mental health issues are are pretty widespread uh, in public high schools. Um, I think this has a lot to do with the way that uh, schools kind of teach us values and and talk to us about mental health. For one, schools encourage tremendous competition um, between people. You know, the idea of, of being self-conscious because of your race, um, your class, your intelligence, these are, all, uh, these are all reasons for people getting anxiety and feeling self-conscious and not being comfortable within their own skin. And I saw this firsthand at my school, whether it be uh, people uh, feeling, feeling uh, ostracized because of they were, you know, a different color, or because they, you know, couldn't afford the same clothes, or they weren't in like, the smartest classes. You know, my friends, like we were always, some, like you know, very competitive. Um, and I, I, you know, I regret it. I, it had a lot of impact on me. But we were always very competitive um, with getting into the best, you know, classes and being the best in school. And, and it had a tremendous toll on all of our mental health. You know, we were constantly vying with each other to see who can have, you know, the best grades, who can. Curry the most favor with both our student, the students, and the teachers, and it was like toxic. It was this lifestyle of of reward through grades and through approval. This was something that really took a toll on all of us because our self worth was determined based on these these arbitrary standards. Um, you know, I think grades, and it goes hand in hand when you get older with money. You know, it's tied in with happiness. I think we're kind of encouraged that there's like a reward system in life and that guarantees you happiness. You know, you succeed, you succeed, you know, in grades, with money, you know, in the, in the work in the work world, that guarantees you good health and happiness where it's not so much the case. I think part of the problem is with mental health is a lot of the most successful people are assumed to be the happiest when often they're the ones who have a lot of mental health issues, you know? So I felt like I saw this with a lot of my friends. Um, I mean, look, one of the main times when this was common was, you know, applying for college. Um, you know, I applied for college last year. I'm a rising sophomore now. I applied to, uh, when I applied to Middlebury College, um, I was I did early decision. You know, it was actually a kind of like a smooth process for me, luckily. But a lot of my friends, I mean, I saw. You know, it seemed like they were on the verge of breaking because they were putting so much pressure on themselves to succeed, and it was it was scary. It was almost like they didn't.
care so much about where they were getting in. It was just they needed the name and they needed the approval of their parents, and they put so much riding on on getting into the school they wanted to. It was a little disappointing, and you know it's it's kind of it's kind of worrisome. Um, I think another thing too is people tend to everyone deals with mental health, but people tend to keep it kind of locked up. I felt like in schools, especially you know where everyone is so concerned for the most part with maintaining an image, especially you know among students and with their parents, people tended to keep their either their depressions or their anxieties or anything related to their mental health. They kept they kept it on lock and key, and they didn't they didn't want to talk about it. You know, part of I think part of the way we can improve uh, the state of mental health, um, you know, in, in in youths and people in general, is have a more open dialogue about it. And this has to do with you know kids talking to each other and adults talking to each other and adults talking to kids and 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 you know it, there needs to be comfort with talking about mental health because it's a natural part of life and it doesn't mean people generally tend to think if they have something wrong with their mental health there's something wrong with them there's something wrong with like the way they are and they'll be judged but i think we're getting to a point where you know i'm hopeful because i think mental health there's becoming enough awareness that people are able to talk about it more, um, but it still needs to grow. Uh, as a movement, in order to gain awareness and education about mental health and to improve uh, you know, the state of mental health in our country, I think people need to talk about it um, a bit more. Um, and you know, a great thing about it, I mean, you know, it, about talking about it, is everyone goes through it. Everyone can relate, everyone has a story. And by sharing your story, you know, it enables compassion and empathy, and, and it allows people to learn and grow um, in ways that are uh, pretty important. Uh, I think this starts at the, the child to parent level, and even child to teacher, you know, these relationships are the ones that basically fortify, you know, your childhood. And to be comfortable talking about things that you're worried about, things that you're dealing with, with the the authorities in your life when you're young is so important and it's something that is really amiss I think today um, in schools and, um, and in households. Um, for me, the way I dealt with you know uh, whatever mental health stuff you know I had to go through during schools, it was through meditation. This is something I learned about through a friend. It's something that isn't really talked about at all um, for the most part. I think I got lucky that I found out about it. You know, meditation, reflection, uh, these things of just just sitting with your feelings, sitting with your thoughts, it's something that isn't really taught at all. The common thread is, you know, just to pop pills or keep it to yourself. That seems to be like the one, the, those seem to be the methods that like the people who are uneducated and don't really know, understand mental health tend to default to. But, you know, schools I think could do a, could do a really, a wonderful thing for their students if they perhaps introduce meditation as a means of helping kids uh, understand their feelings and, and deal with them appropriately. Um, but you know, the most important thing, you know, because our schools aren't really going to change anytime soon, um, as far as I can tell, in terms of the reward system and the competition. This is stuff that, you know, is going to be going on for a long time, so it seems. It doesn't seem like uh, anyone is keen on changing it. but. Through open dialogue, through through mindfulness, through having comfort in talking about the issues you're going through, whether it be about uh, mental health or to be to you know to be about what you're dealing with what, what you're dealing with. Because honestly, you know, a lot of people, whether you haven't even been affected by mental health yourself, which is you know pretty unlikely. Chances are you know someone that that has, and I know so, countless people, countless people. And it's important that these people share their story. Um, so I've talked a little bit about about how school kind of shaped uh, the mental my experience with mental health that I saw as a kid, and how parents maybe can do a better job of of helping their kids with mental health by becoming more well versed and understanding it and being a bit more compassionate. Um, I'd love to know what you guys have to think. Uh, please leave uh, your comments uh, on this video and. Uh, on posts uh, throughout Blend, and make sure to follow Blend on all social media platforms. Uh, we'd love to hear what you have to say. 
um, and tell us what do you think we should do? How do you think we can change? That's this is what Blend's all about. Hearing your voice, uh, we'd love to hear what you have to say, and uh, see you guys next time on our next session of the Real Talk. Thank you guys for tuning in.